Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. Unusual video this, but it comes as um, a, a, as a amalgamation of quite a few requests about mounted orchids, and the questions are many and varied. Um, but the first one I want to get out of the way will have some unusual answers, and that is what influences me to mount an orchid rather than put it in a pot? Okay. Now this has got several answers <laughs> and one of them is I haven't got much room for more pots. You know my shelf space is limited. <clears throat> so that's that's answer number one. It's nothing to do with the orchid at all, it's to do with the type of space I've got. Yeah? So that, that, that's one thing. <coughs> the next thing should be the type of orchid. Is it suitable for a mount? Well, quite honestly, depending on how much work you're going to put in, most orchids will grow on a mount. It's just a matter of um, the type of orchid's needs. Now, if an orchid needs to stay constantly moist, you know, something like a Mazdavalia or a Dracula, um, Restrepias, they'll grow on a mount. But your difficulty will be keeping them constantly moist. It'll be hard work. I mean, the sort of heat I've had over the last few days, they could need watering three times a day. Because they're going to dry so fast. Yeah? In that sort of heat, anyway. Now, today, we've got a, a more sensible day. Um, it's bright light outside. The sun hasn't actually broken through yet. And um, as a consequence, I've got a reasonable bit of heat in here. It's coming up to 23 degrees C. And... My humidity is just staying nice and constant at 72, well, 70 to 72 percent. So I've got no effort out here today. I filled the foggers up this morning and so far they haven't turned on. I don't need the fans on. There's not enough heat to warrant cooling the leaves down with the fans. So I've got a nice even sort of thing today. But I will get warm days and in those warm days, whether that orchid can afford to go dry for a period of time or not is an influence on whether to mount or not. <coughs> My telumnias are hiding up there in the main. Um, now those need a fast wet dry cycle, preferably daily. Yeah? What's the easiest way to accommodate a plant drying out on a daily basis? Stick it on a mount. And those don't like their roots confined either, they like air around their roots. They take on board water fast, store it, and then wait for some more the next day. Normally in the morning, it's normally morning dew they get if it doesn't rain. But they live in a place where the humidity in the air is high, that's how they grow. So, if I get a telumnia, there's no decision to make quite honestly, it just goes on a mount. That, that, that's it. Um, <coughs> Other types, I've got, that's a type of mount, although it's working more like a pot on its side because it has actually got more like potting media in it, but that's a Bulbophyllum. All three of my Orangus are on little mounts, yeah? I mean, if you, my sort of encyclopedia type book on Orangus, there are quite a few Orangus species that will only grow on a tree trunk that has nothing on it. If it's not bare bark, you won't find those plants there. So they don't grow in moss or anything like that, they grow on bare bark. So perfect. That's a Rodriguezii, <coughs> and I've got a feeling that would do better in a pot. Um, that got put on a mount because it has a mass of aerial roots basically, which sort of says to me that it probably lends itself to growing on a mount. But uh, anyway, little dendrobium there, that's sort of doing okay. That one um, Jenkins CI, and blooms are starting to go on that, I've only just noticed that, the bulk. Um, we've still got these are quite fresh out here, and a few, but that won't be long. Um, that is done well on its mount, but, you know, uh, that was a good decision in its, in its day. I mean, I've had that one a long time, it's been on that mount a long time, and it's doing okay. <coughs> um, there's another Orangus there, another type of Dendrobium. Um, but the next decision really is, um, what sort of care does the plant need? Now, as you know, I've got a lot of dendrobiums, and there's a good portion of those that need the winter rest treatment. 
Well that's not so easy to do in a pot. It really isn't. Um, let's just take this one down for, as an example of a winter resting type. Yeah, This is almost bare rooted. So in the winter time <coughs> this needs to stay dry most of the time. But every now and again it needs a bit of hydration to stop the cane shriveling. And I can give that a small amount of water. If that had loads of moss on there, it would get wet when I watered it. Whereas I only want to give it a tiny amount of water. So there, there in part is a bit of a decision. Yeah, If it's a winter resting type, then by putting it on a mount, I get to control the amount of water it has. It's very difficult to water a pot a little bit. You know, if you see what I mean. You either sort of water it or you don't. You know, and that could be a bit too much all in one go, especially with those lower temperatures. So there's a decision made there. Um, resting type dendrobiums, I would prefer on a mount. They're just easier to handle during that rest period. The decision to give them a trickle of water or not is much easier made when I can see the roots. Yeah. <clears throat> Next decision is, how big is it? <laughs> and what I call the long cane dendrobiums, there's just no choice. Trying to stand in th these things upright, you'll struggle, you'll have canes everywhere and ties and stakes and everything like that trying to keep the thing from doing what it ought to do, which is arch over and hang down. That's their natural growth pattern. You'll find the new growth growths will head for the sky. But as they become heavier, they start to arch and they naturally arch downwards. It's how they grow. So trying to stand something like this up in a pot would take an effort. You know, I mean, the length of this cane. And, you know, you can see the length of some of those canes there. So <clears throat> those types, the long cane dendrobiums, on the mount. Especially if they're winter resting as well, which everything up there is, quite honestly, well, bar one which I made a mistake and rested it when I shouldn't have done. Well, you we can't get it right all the time. Um, the next thing is, where's the best, thing, best way to look at the blooms from? Do they look better from the side or from underneath? These, slightly pendulous. So by getting this up, up there, yeah, I can sort of look up at them and get to see the colour. Same with these, slightly pendulous, best looked at from alongside or slightly lower. Um, Hercoglossum, best looked at from underneath. They, they naturally go flat, yeah? They point downwards. So if you're looking at that from the side, you don't see the blooms at all. So again, get it for me, get it up in the air. Now that's not a resting type, but it's still on a mount because I want to get it up in the air. I don't like hanging pots everywhere. Um, I tend to bump my head quite a lot. Uh, I've tried it, I don't like it. Mounts up in the air, pots on the shelves, that's, that's how I like it. Um, other types that I've got on mounts that might surprise you, um, <clears throat> round the back of this shelf, what's the reason for putting these on a mount then? Yeah, These came out of the big box full I had. You know, sort of an emergency evacuation from one country into another. <laughs> well, I put these on a mount because I haven't got enough room for the pots to put them in. You know, I mean, that's a catlia. That'll do fine on a mount. And it is doing fine. That's having a real good spurt of roots at the moment. Goo! Whoopee! So, catlias do fine on mounts. But for me, I add a little bit more moss to these because although they liked a wet dry cycle, it doesn't have to be ultra fast like say the Tolumnias do, but they do need to dry off in between. And um, they do it quite well on a mount. Yeah, so I've, I've got some Cattleyas on mounts too. Reason, not, not enough room for the pots. I've got a little Oncidium here, that's um, Tiny Twinkle. Why that got put on a mount, I don't remember, but it's doing okay on the mount. It's um, just coming back into growth now after a mass blooming. So there's quite a few new growths pushing up now. One at the base there, one two there, another two there. 
So it's having a growth spurt at the moment. Oh, and another one up there. So a good number of new growth. That's the next lot of blooms coming there. There was a couple in the middle as well. So I would say, let's go round. One, <clears throat> two, three, four, five, six, seven, probably eight new growths on that tiny little plant. And each one of those should produce a spike. So in theory, another mass blooming to come. But it quite likes that mount. But it does need to stay moist when it's actively growing. So this has now got a workload. Yeah? Yes, it's going to dry out each day, but I don't want to miss a day. It needs water. It's growing. There's a lot of active new growth on there. So at the moment, that would do great in a pot. Yeah? It'll do okay on a mount because I'm prepared to put the work in. Um, there's another one up here. Let's drag this down because this is a bit unusual. Now this is a Miltonia, not Miltoniopsis. Don't get the two confused. <laughs> you will mess yourself up. This is a Miltonia. This had the dreaded F. And um, the back end of the plant, those oldest two pseudo bulbs, have still got it. How can I tell? It's attempted to put up a new growth and it won't grow. And it won't grow any roots from that section. That's because that section is just clogged up. It's never going to be any good. One day <coughs> that back section of that plant's coming off and it might not be too long down the line because now would be a perfect time to take that off of this mount and either remount it or pot it because look what's going on. The two latest new growths it's managed to it grew a new bulb nice and strong and healthy compared to the previous two and then that new bulb put out two new growths so as far as I'm concerned, this front end of this plant is clean, or it wouldn't be able to do that. I know that flipping fungus well enough. And at the moment, look at the roots it's chucking out from those two latest growths. This would be a perfect time to do something with that if I chose to. But it has recovered from the dreaded, grown well, so I'm in no rush to do anything with that. It's doing okay. There's plenty of places for those roots to go. Some will stay aerial, some will get down in that moss. But again, <clears throat> although it's coming to the end of its serious bit of active growth, it hasn't finished. Because although these new growths are far bigger than anything else, the base has not swollen up and formed a pseudo bulb yet. So it's still got some growing to do. And then it better think about blooming. Come on. <laughs> but. I hope you can sort of see where I'm getting at. My use of mounted orchids is to utilise my space. Now here's another surprising one. Well, not surprising, this is pretty obvious actually. This is some um, polybulbin. And um, this is a natural creeper. It will grow up tree trunks, along branches. <clears throat> That's how it grows. So it extends in all directions, basically. Well, this is about to get its extensions severely curtailed. Those two leads heading up to the top of the mount and off the top are going to get cut and replanted down here. There's loads of new growth in the centre, yeah? But at the moment, those two extensions are going to get lost off the mount soon. So while they've got good roots, I'm going to replant those down there. And then they can creep up through the plant and head up to the top again. But that probably wouldn't do too well in a pot. I have seen them in pots, but for me, it's easier to manage on a mount. Right, another surprise. You might say, what on earth are you doing putting a brassier on a mount? The reason, hang it up. This is the reason that's on a mount. That spike's probably going to get two foot long with enormous blooms when they finally come out. If that was in a pot, that would have to be staked and it would have to go on a shelf that would allow that spike to stick up two feet. Yeah, so again, it would take up shelf space. But by having it mounted where I can get it in a place this spike can extend, and as the buds form and it gets heavier, it will arch naturally. Well, in a pot, if it arched naturally, it would look good, 
but look how much shelf space that would then need just to accommodate the flower spike. So my reason for putting that on a mount was purely because I knew the flower spike would be enormous in length. And trying to get that organised on shelves is not very easy. But hanging up, no problem at all. Seems to be happy on its mount as well. And that latest growth is far bigger than anything else. And it's uh, certainly chucked out some roots. So uh, that's why that one got mounted, purely because of its flower spike. Nothing to do with the type of orchid really, it's to do with the way it blooms. So uh, there we go. Now on the dendrobium front, the ones I don't mount are the Latoria types and the Phalaenopsis types. And the reason is they're continuous growers, they naturally grow upright and normally don't need any help at all at keeping those canes heading skywards. In other words, they don't need staking, they're self-supporting, but the most important thing is they're continuous growers. Yeah, and certainly in the growing season they shouldn't dry out. Well, that's almost impossible on a mount. So a combination of how it grows and how it needs to be looked after says that those are not so good on a mount. Yeah? So you can sort of see where I'm coming from. But I like my mounted orchids. I l just have a, let me stand back a bit. <clears throat> if you have a look round the shelves, now imagine that there was nothing up in the roof. How boring would that be out here? You know, it extends the greenery into far more places. And it, it feels more tropical-like when I come out here, because I've got things like growing up above me and um, alongside, and some that I have to look down at. <laughs> Some I look down at because I don't like them that much. Uh, another story. But you see where I'm coming from. I like my mounted orchids, but I am selective. There are certain orchids that would do less well on a mount because I couldn't keep up with their care. Yeah? So there, there's a decision there. So that's sort of along the lines of the decision-making process, and it's um, many and varied. There's no one thing that tells me an orchid should be mounted. Um, I mean, this one's just been mounted, so currently it is actually upside down because this was growing upright with a lot of trouble because it kept falling over, yeah? And because it's recently been mounted, its leaves are facing the wrong way. <clears throat> this one hasn't been long mounted, but already you can see the leaves starting to turn. They'll turn towards the light. And after a while you'll find that, like with this one, even though these canes are hanging downwards, the leaves aren't. Yeah? So they acclimatise to have their leaves facing upwards, once they've been there a while. You don't do it immediately. Um, it's difficult. If you look at that, um, that one at the end near the door, if you look at the leaved canes, the non-leaved canes on that one are currently full of buds or spikes. Um, they'll buds be on the end of the spike soon. But if you look at the canes, they're hanging almost directly downwards, but the leaves are facing upwards. Yeah? They, they acclimatise to how they're being grown. These canes, yeah? They're arching downwards, but their leaves are facing upwards. And that's how they become given time. But they won't do it straight away. So, uh, yeah, don't... You know, if you when you first mount a plant, it may look odd because you've just turned it from being upright to being upside down. But give it give it time, and it will start to look right. And there is a look about them once they once they have been growing on a mount in a pendulous form for an amount of time, they look right. But it it takes a while. It can take a year before it happens. And often it's the new growth that do it. So if you look at those new growths up there. They're pointing towards the sky, but they're going to get this long. So eventually, they will get heavy, and they'll just start to keel over, they'll end up horizontal, and then eventually they will turn downwards, but their leaves will point upwards. Yeah, so they, they, they do acclimatise to the way they're being grown. So, uh, yeah, just a chat about mounted orchids. So this bush down here, Actually, it's got, got some new blooms open on this one. Jolly good. Lovely honey scent on that one. 
um, endearingly known as the bush, that would grow mounted, but it, for me it probably wouldn't look quite, quite right. For a start, it would be from the ceiling far too low. You know, if you, if you look at the height of this thing, um, and if it was hung upside down, its natural arching habit, once the canes get to their height, they'd end up doing that. That's now four foot long. Well, where can I put four foot of orchid up here without keep walking into it? <laughs> that really would look like a jungle. So this one naturally puts up strong new growth. They get to a certain height and then they arch and then they start to branch and they do get a lot of branches on them yeah so it naturally grows like that for me that would probably look wrong on a mount and it would be too big to mount for once it's <laughs> too long to actually put up in the roof but it's doing okay where it is at the moment so uh, but again look how many stakes i've had to I've, there's ties and stakes on this to keep it upright because it was quite gangly when i got it but future growths can be trained to grow up the middle and then from the top arch outwards. And I think eventually, you know, I'll get a look more like this, but round the whole plant. That's my goal with that one anyway. Um, I don't count vanders as mounted orchids. They're just bare rooted. Um, that, that's a different thing altogether. Um, <clears throat> but I like them bare rooted because I like to keep them up there. Now that one's in a wooden basket, there's nothing in that basket, it's just using it as an anchor basically. But my vanders live up there because that's my brightest light and they seem to do okay up there. Um, one of them didn't like the cold in the winter, <laughs> or didn't like something in the winter anyway. But uh, yeah, so that's the sort of um, decision making process for deciding whether or not to mount an orchid. But chances are my decision is either based on is it a dendrobium and needs a dry winter rest or drier winter rest um, is it going to be high maintenance because it should never dry out which would probably exclude it from the list how is the flower spike going to grow how big it's going to get what sort of space will it take up when it blooms that came into it and in addition to that the sheer size of the plant the long cane dendrobiums just need to be hung or they're forever a problem trying to get the flipping things to stand upright. It's not how they grow. They naturally arch over and then become pendulous. So, yeah, that's the sort of uh, chat about mounts. I hope I haven't forgotten anything. But if I have, um, I'm sure I'll get reminded in the comments and then I can um, answer any questions I've forgotten in there. But that, that's really what it is with me. And for me, mounting an orchid, probably because I've done a lot, but it's one of the simplest things to do because you've got a job to get it wrong. <laughs> How can you get an orchid wrong when all you're doing is strapping it to a piece of wood? You can choose the wrong piece of wood. I've just done a video on the possibilities of the wrong wood. Um, and I've now got to watch my step as a consequence of that because... Um, I've unmounted an orchid that was just failing badly and it could have been the wood it was on. And I've now got to have a scout round and see if I've got any other orchids on the same wood. Um, I've only really got a couple of types of wood in here. There's the cork bark. That's the chunky stuff. Um, like that. Yeah, big chunky cork bark. Look how thick it is. <laughs> That's why it's not my favourite, because it's, it's so big. But then there's the curved type, like this. And I'm pretty sure that that came off a piece of trunk that I got for the cats to scratch out in the garden. And that was hawthorn, English hawthorn. Now that seems okay, but it's nice and thin, but it does have a large, you know, a quite pronounced curve on it because it wasn't a huge trunk. But there's some of that lurking around. And then there's some oak bark, some of which I collected from the forest, that's English oak, and some of which I bought from a guy I found um, on the Isle of Wight. And um, I did buy a sort of job lot from him. But then there's some other stuff in here that I'm not sure what it is. Uh, let's see if I can find it. There's a piece. Yeah. Now, that may be oak, it may be one of those pieces, and it may not. But it's 
If it is, it's quite thick and it'll be difficult for me to imagine how they managed to get that off the trunk with that, that depth of bark. But anyway, I'm keeping my eye on my different types of wood in case I've got some dodgy stuff in here that's, um, I mean, this is a dodgy plant. Could it be the wood? Now that's very, very thin. So that probably is the oak. But the roots on that are not doing well. They're objecting to something. So I might take that one off. But type of wood, it's difficult to find out whether it's good for your orchids or not. But given the selection of types of wood that Rick's come across and used, that's probably your best source to ask, is this wood okay for orchids? Because if Rick's used it, he'll know by now, because he's just found a duff bit <laughs> or a duff type of wood, and he's now sorting that out. You know, so not all wood is suitable for orchid roots. They will object to some types of wood. But if you stick to the cork bark, it's inert. Its only downside is it holds no water. That's why it floats. <laughs> it doesn't absorb any water. You get the um, heavier types of wood and things like that. They absorb water. They'll hold water. Yeah. But the cork bark is virtually indestructible. I haven't had any rot on me yet, and it just, just hangs in there. But it is thick and chunky. Um, good for big mounts, but doesn't look so good with small mounts. I mean, if you take this, this tiny little one, let's get this down again. I mean, that's cork bark. That's a tiny little mount for what is currently a tiny little orchid. But it's chunky. Now, I'm not so keen on that look, but I know that that wood will not hurt the plant. It just hasn't got anything in it that leaks out or, you know, or breaks down or anything. It's good stuff, but it is thick and chunky. And you can get that in huge sizes. I mean, that big piece up there on the end, that, that's cork bark, so is the one next to it. This, this can come in big pieces, so you can then cut it to the sizes you like. Cuts quite easily as well, it's quite soft. But nonetheless, it doesn't hold water. So your watering effort will be greater if you use cork bark. Yeah? Anyway, chat about uh, mounted orchids and uh, why I like them. My logic as to why I choose to mount an orchid. Sometimes a bit irrational, but you know, <laughs> that's me. It's my orchids. I'll do what I like. <laughs> and uh, uh, just a warning shot that not all wood is suitable to plonk your orchid roots on. It's probably something to do with speed at which it breaks down and starts to rot and what starts coming out of it as it starts to break down. If you think about it, it's the same as the cork bark you use for media. When that starts to break down, it turns acidic and it'll mess your roots, yeah? So it's the same sort of thing, just in one big piece instead of lots of little pieces. The logic's there, you know. So go steady, don't let your wood start falling apart around your roots because there could be stuff forming that's just turning your roots off so uh, right see you next time and if i've forgotten anything stick it in the comments and i'll see what i can do bye now <laughs>